I mean, really, truly grateful. I mean, you know, things are changing so much around us. We know that, but we have an unchanging God, right? We have an unchanging God, and we need to be grateful for that. Brother, I don't think my PowerPoint's up there, so don't even worry about it. Um, but, uh, but as you know, Kylie and Caden are gone on vacation. We're making adjustments uh, with, uh, with the PowerPoints and what have you, because uh, Kylie... Normally runs that. She does such a great job. But uh, as I said, she is. They are in. Uh, they are. They are in Michigan right now. So do remember them in prayer. Moving from struggle to surplus. And it not, it, that's not just in our finances, but we need to move from struggling in our relationships, struggling in our spiritual life, struggling in, in, in every aspect of our life to living a life of surplus because Jesus said, I've come to give life and give it more abundantly, right? And so we talked last week about that, but today we're going to be talking about moving from death into destiny. From death into destiny. And so if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open it up to Ephesians chapter 2. And we will... And while you're finding that, it's Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to be coming out of verses 1 through 10 today. Uh, but as you find that, uh, there was a story... Of uh, 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 an old, uh, an old, uh, uh, just an old crotchety fellow that uh, let me get to it. Uh, that that, um, that that process of dying. He was on his deathbed, and he calls for his wife. And uh, he, she get, he gives her instructions and says, "Go to the fireplace and go in, in, in the third brick, the third brick up from the bottom. Go ahead and take that brick out and dig in there, and you'll find a jar, a mason jar." And so she did what her husband said. So um, she 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 goes and retrieves this. She finally got it out and. And she would be, she looked at it and it was full of money. It was just full of money. And and so she brings it to her husband and he says, Wife, I'm going to that night he died and the day after, after the funeral was over and everything she thought oh man i need to go check and see if they check on that mason jar so she goes up to the attic and that mason jar is still sitting there full of money and she said i knew i should have put it in the basement has a destiny. Everybody's got a destiny. Um, and, and, and we're going to look at that and, and we're going to talk about exactly what exactly what we're going to be with, you know, how, we, how we need to live from, and move from death into our destiny. So Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. The first thing that I want to talk today about in We are dead without Jesus. So let's look at the first the first three verses in Ephesians chapter two. And this is why I'm in the CSB again. Um, and, and so this is what the word of the Lord says this morning. And Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter two, beginning at verse one, he said, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you previously lived according to the ways of this world, according to Our 
flesh and thoughts. And we were by nature children under wrath as others were also. So how many know that we are dead, as Paul says, without Jesus? We are dead in our sins and sins and trespasses. That's not really something that's talked about very much today in our churches. Let's just be honest. It's not talked about very much in our churches about how we need to live holy lives, how we need to be separated from this world, how we need to be different than what everybody else is. And if, if the world can't see a difference in us, then perhaps we need to visit. We need to do that every day anyway, right? All my, if you're like me, and I've said this before, if you're like me, you need to, you need to visit the cross like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten times an hour. Well, see now. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, wait. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, let's let's be honest. I mean, we live in a world, and 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 we live in a world that that has a prince of the power of the air. Who is the prince of the power of the air? The Satan, the devil. In other words, he is the prince over this earthly realm, as Paul said. can't determine that we are that we're different than them by the way we act by the things we do by the things that we say then there is a serious issue anyway right right we're so god says you are to be holy as i am holy that's what the lord says you are to be holy you are to be separate you are to be different than anybody else that was the whole reason he set aside Israel to be his own special people, right? And now because of what Jesus did, we can all be accepted into the family of God. Now, what Paul is saying here is that being without Jesus is being in sin. I know that's hard, isn't it? Jesus. We've got to have that relationship with Jesus Christ. If we don't have that relationship, and th then that means we are living in sin. You can come to church all day long. You can come to church seven days a week. You can come to church on... You, you, I mean, it, th that doesn't mean a thing. Coming to church is not going to save you. Amen? Coming to church, why? Well, yeah, and we stand before God. At the, at the end of the day, and, and, and I don't listen, I know plenty of people that are like this. They sit in church pews every Sunday. They because there are going to be people that are going to be very surprised when the Lord looks at them and says, Carry thought. So being without Jesus is being in sin. Being without Jesus means that we're living in, in disobedience. Being without Jesus means we're a child of disobedience. Being without Jesus means that we are then living under God's wrath. Oh, see, that's another thing we don't talk about very much. Because people think, well, God is a loving God. God is love. God is love. Jesus is love. And Whatever, well, well, yeah, that is true. Well, John, First John tells us God is love. You also have to have that wrath because it's it's because of His love that we've got to have the wrath. He can't. You know, well, we're all going to be we're all going to be made responsible for things, and and we're all living under a time of grace. And we'll talk about this later. But we're all living under this time of grace right now. How many know that to be true? And how many are thankful for that grace? How many are thankful for that mercy? 
Because without that grace and mercy, we would fall under that wrath and he would wipe us out. I remember, how many remember when Dale Earnhardt died? Anybody watching it on TV? I remember. My pastor at that point in time, he was a huge Dale Earnhardt fan. Huge. And it was that, that, down at Daytona. And how many have seen some terribly awful wrecks at Daytona? Right? And Dale Earnhardt just crashes into the wall. It looks like a normal. Dale just hit that, he hit that wall. And that was it for him. Broke his neck, he died. So you never know. You just never know. And so that's why we have to live a life of holiness. That's why we've got to live this life that, that Jesus is going to be pleased with. Because we never know when we're going to step into eternity. We just never know. See, being without Jesus also means that you're serving Satan. give all their money away, but is that going to get them into heaven? Is that going to satisfy God's wrath? No. I mean, it, it's not. And also, it's hard, it's hard to picture this. It's hard to understand this, but without Jesus, you're serving Satan. It's either one or the other. Jesus He talks about serving two masters. You can't serve two masters. You are into all in with one and all out with the other, or you hate one and you love the other. That's the one that it's it's either you're in or you're out. Don't get rid of them. We used to sing an old song, you better get in or get out. Don't get run over. I mean, you know what? I mean, it, it's either you're all in with Love him. See, I mean, if, 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 you, if, the, if, you're either serving the devil or you're serving Jesus. It's one of the two. Well, I don't, I don't worship the Baal, you know, the the, the Baal uh, uh, idols. I don't worship these statues. I don't worship at Buddha's feet. I don't do this. I well, you don't have to. Jesus said, you're either in with him or you're out. There is no in between. And it's interesting how he tied that into money, isn't it? It's interesting how I tied that into money because money has this tendency to take the place of God. I mean, we talked about it kind of last week. You know, you haven't remember the video from last week. We, you know, we, you run to make money. You, you run. You can't stop. You've got to make money to buy things so you can keep up with the Joneses, right? And a lot of times, what happens is money is so powerful, greed is so powerful that it sets up as a replacement for God. I mean, Jesus compared it and said, you can't serve God and money.
puts in there this this little like disclaimer. And why is that? Well, Paul talks about it in First Timothy six ten. For the love of money is the root of all evil. How many can complete the the rest of that statement? The rest of that verse. See, this is what happens. We we we, we pull stuff out in this. True, the love of money. Money is not evil in and of itself, okay? Money's not evil. Money is meant to be a tool. It, we, how many know we need money for the world to go around? <laughs> we do. It's, it, it's, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a necessary evil. We've got to have money in order to buy groceries. We've got to have money in order to put gas in our car. We've got to have money to live in it, right? I mean, this is, this is how it is. But Paul said, for the love of money is a root of all. By craving it, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. You know, we talked about the lottery winners last week, right? The lottery winners. There's actually a curse of the light. It's a show that was on several years ago, The Curse of the Lottery. And many of the people that win the lottery, the big lottery, you know, the mega million, they die. They end up in living in squalor and then end up a lot of them have died. So we can see what Paul is meaning here. It's a root of many evils. Really, when you get down to the, to, when you chip away at everything, yeah, you need you, you need it for this, you need it for that, but, but our love of money and chasing after that dollar can destroy us and destroy our relationship with the Father. It can destroy. So this first thing from moving from death into death. says. Prepare, my friend, to follow me. Okay? Kind of makes sense. A visitor came by, though, read that, and added something to it. He added this, and he said, To follow you is not my intent until I know which way you went. So we, I mean, everybody, and, and what that said is true. We understand what, what the first part of that poem meant. It could come for you at any minute in time. You have to make sure you're right. You have to make sure with Jesus or you'll miss him completely. And that's what the visitor said. You know, I don't I don't necessarily want to follow you unless I know where you went. You know, Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. We I believe we all can say that Jesus and Paul is with Jesus right now, right? And so we can look to Paul and, and he can be a life of someone we need to, uh, uh, he can be an example of the life we need to live. But the simple fact is we've got to be ready. It's ready, it, it, it's time to move into life. It's time to move into life and into is but God. And his grace. See, in verses in verse four, go back to Ephesians chapter two, verse four. And this is what the word of the Lord says. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even. So that in the coming ages, he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. And that's, that's loaded with a lot of good stuff right there. 
How many are glad that God didn't leave you where you were? He found you. He found you. Maybe it was in a maybe it was in a bar stool. Maybe it was maybe. Now, did I fail him many times after that? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Do I still fail him today? I hope not as much, but yes, I do. <laughs> you know, we, we all we are, I'm not perfect. But but that's that's where we can look and say, but God and his grace. We all need to be thankful for the grace of God, as we've already talked about this morning. We need to be thankful for the grace of God because it is by His grace that we're sitting here. It is by His grace that we're here right now. It is by His grace that we are saved. It is by His grace that we are seated in heavenly places. Oh, yeah. It is by His grace. It is by His mercy that He rains down on us that we're here today. Every one of us experiences God's grace, whether we know Jesus or not. Put one in your mind. Who, who do you think is, uh, is some of the most wicked people that's out there? Bill Gates would, foot, would, would, would fall in there because, you know, he says there is no God. Has all that money. Think of, all, think of what we could do with all that money. There would be nobody hungry in marrying. Can I, can I get an amen there? There would be nobody homeless. Everyone is experiencing God's grace. Watch the interesting. I'm not. I, I, I did watch wrestling. I've actually been. How many have watched wrestling? I mean, been to. How many have ever been to matches? To the to. Uh, we, I remember in Lebanon, we used to go to Hershey. We used to go to Hershey Park Arena when the WWF would come in. Remember, we'd go there. We'd go there with church people. Documentary on Ric Flair. And I had no idea until I watched this. It was here in North Carolina. On the way on the east side, the east coast, down in the Wilmington area, I believe. Ric Flair was in a plane crash. Anybody remember that? He was in a plane crash down the eastern side of the state. Broke his back. This. Yeah, he was an up and coming wrestler. I believe it was 1972. I believe it was the year I was born. Ric Flair was in this plane crash. Two people died, another was paralyzed. And he and he was who did the, 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 that man is a good friend of his, and Ric Flair made it out alive. He had one paralyzed. Ric Flair went on to be Ric Flair. <laughs> went on everybody. You never know when things are gonna when things are gonna end up going bad for you. You never know when you're gonna step into eternity. You never know. You just never know. And 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 Ric Flair was known as the as the party guy, 
After the matches, after you know, after he would wrestle, he would go out and he would party hard. And from the way he talks, he still likes to party hard at 71 years old. I can just think, man, what did God have in store for him that he walked away from? See, we need to understand God's got a destiny for us. He's He's got something for us. He's He He wants us. And, and, and Ric Flair, whether he realizes it or not, he is He is a product of God's grace. We're all products of God's grace. God wants to do something with all of us. He wants us in His life. God, He He, want, he wants be in our life. He wants to overtake us with His grace. He wants us to walk into our destiny. But the thing is, we like to think we know what our destiny is better than God does. Don't we? Product of his grace. Well, what is grace? Does anybody know what grace is? What do you think grace is? Anybody? Unmerited favor. It's almost like she was reading my notes. It's almost like she was she's been in this for a while. Unmerited favor. I looked it up in the dictionary. And and grace is Compassion or forbearance shown especially to an offender or to one subject to one's power or to one subject to one's power. Compassionate, compassion or forbearance, unmerited favor. His God's unmerited favor, his undeserved favor and mercy. I can look around the room and look in a mirror and I can say that I did not deserve His grace and His mercy. Nobody does. It's only because of what Jesus did that we experience that grace and that mercy now. Even in our sinful state, as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, even in our sinful state, God showed mercy to us. Even though He knew we would reject Him, he showed mercy to us. Even though he knew that Brother Benny was going to fall, he showed mercy. Even though he knew I would fall, he showed grace and mercy to me. Unmerited favor. This world is experiencing that unmerited favor whether they realize it or not. This world is a fallen world, isn't it? This world is headed down a path of destruction. Even the experts say it. Even those that don't believe in God say it. Now, granted, they think aliens will come and destroy the world or, or climate change is going to take out the world or we're, we'll end up like the dinosaurs and blah, 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 blah. A meteor will hit. I mean, this is, the, this is their explanation. But we know by reading God's Word, this world... love for us that's why he shows us grace that's why he shows it to us for those who say God is a is not a loving God they look at the Old Testament they point to the Old Testament and they question how God can be a loving God when he when so many people in the Old Testament died That's how God is. God is a God of love, but with that love, you have to have the justice. Because God is holy. 
And God is a righteous God. See, this is how this is how we need to understand it. See, his his love is patient. You know, First Corinthians chapter thirteen. You want to get a picture of God? Go there and look at His love. First Corinthians thirteen is known as the chapter of love. His love is patient. His love is kind. His love never ends. His love will be forever because He is love. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Why? Because God is love. It's not He didn't create love. He didn't He didn't create He didn't create love like He created you and me. He is love. That is that that's that is that is his that, that's one of his attributes. He is love. He didn't create love, he is love. And so we need to understand this, and we need to move toward his grace. Don't take his grace for granted. Move toward his grace. You've got to move toward his grace. Accept his grace. We've got to accept his grace, his love, his mercy. We have to move toward Him. Why? Brings up the third thing that I want to talk about. God's gift is for everybody. What is God's gift? What is God's gift? God's gift is for everyone. God's gift is for each one of us. What is that gift? Well, let's look in verses 8 through 10 and see if we can't decipher what it is. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's God's gift. Yeah. Verse 9 goes on to say, Not from works, so that, so that no one can boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for each of us to do. So what is God's gift? What is God's gift? Some, somebody help me. What is God's gift? Grace. You are saved by what? Grace. Okay, so you are saved. If you have salvation, if you have Jesus in your heart, that is. It's God's gift. God and God's gift is for everybody. We can't determine who God's going to save. We can't say, "Well, they're not good enough. They're not good enough. I saw them yesterday. They're, I know they're not." We we can't do that. It's not for us to say who gets saved because God's grace is for everyone. God's salvation is for everyone. It is for and and I know there there are some hard there are some hard scriptures throughout the Bible that you know where where people is everyone God wants everyone to be saved that's why we're still here God wants everyone to be saved and to be in a relationship with him that's why Jesus came that's why Jesus came into this world so that everyone could over completely to say to be used as the antichrist it is for him too or i know that messes with you the, the message with when you begin to think about god's grace and you begin to think about the salvation that jesus came to give it's for everyone think about the most wicked person you know again the most wicked person you know the one that says gd every other word the one that drops the F-bomb just like it's normal English. The one that sleeps around with 50 women on a night. See, 
I mean, think about it. The most wicked person you can think of. Jesus died for them. And this gift of salvation is for them as well. Who can quote it? <laughs> okay, so who can re who can quote seventeen and eighteen? Because seventeen and eighteen—that's the uh, John three sixteen, most famous the most famous scripture in the world. How many would agree with that? They hold up John 3.16 at football games, basketball games. You always see somebody with a sign, John 3.16. My thing is, if they, especially now, if they don't know the Bible, they don't know what that says. Okay? But... He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Let's look, let's look and we'll see what it says beyond that. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The world, that, that, that means everyone, right? The world includes everyone. So verse 18 goes on to say, anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. So Jesus came to relieve that condemnation. Jesus came to save everyone, to offer that to everyone. That's for you, that's for me. And how many are glad that, that, that salvation was for me? Point to yourself and say, I'm glad he saved me. I'm glad He didn't give up on me. I'm glad He showed me that grace and that mercy. I'm glad that He gave that to me. But the thing is, we can't hold... the greatest sign of love the greatest sign of love that the, that is true what's the greatest sign of love john 15 13 the greatest sign what thank you exactly brother carl's got it he's on today did everybody hear what he said say it again brother carl exactly Jesus said the greatest sign of love is that a person gives up his life to save someone else. He says friend in John 15, 13, but then Jesus goes on to say, you're my friends if you do. They were going to break his command. Even though he knew they were going to desert him. He still gave his life for them. It's crazy, isn't it? He still looked at them and said, you're still my friend. And I'm going to lay my life down for you. That is the sign of. That free gift of God. See, how many love gifts? I love to open gifts. I know. We're, we're, we're all at this point where I would just rather give gifts away, right? But let's be honest. We like to receive stuff too, right? 
Father's Day was last week, and uh, I actually posted this on Facebook. Kids didn't have a lot of money to do anything for me. And so they gave something that money will never buy. They did something for me that's more cherished than anything money can You know, spending a bunch of money. Why? Because they use their creativity and use their time and use their talents to give to me, to present something to me. That meant more to me than going out and buying any, any kind of gift card, taking me out to eat or whatever. It doesn't matter. They did that for me. That's what Jesus did for us. Jesus gave his life, gave of himself so that we could live. What greater gift could we, could we ever want from him? What greater gift could we ever want from him? So it's time to move into his presence. It's time to move into his presence. Because he has given us that gift. We get to choose whether or not we want Jesus. Again, this goes into that. that we're all predestined to be with the Father because we are his creatures. We are his creation. Jesus gave his life for each one of us, but yet God loves us so much that he allows us to choose. It's really, you know, when you think about it, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, okay, so, so let, let's just think about this for a second. iPhone or Android? Which would you prefer? iPhone or Android? whatever you want if they, you know iphone or android you that, that that's your thing okay let's think about this ford or chevy chevy do we have any ford fans in the house i don't see any ford fans at all oh wait this sister sister leo is a oh that must be an interesting conversation in their house <laughs> dodge oh yeah there's a never stood found on road dead that's what never mind <laughs> Okay, so the, 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 okay, one last thing. McDonald's fries or Chick-fil-A fries? Chick-fil-A Chick -fil all the way for me. I, I used to love McDonald's fries, but I got saved, and now I love Chick-fil-A's more. <laughs> but really, I mean, the, I mean, you think about it, these are, these are silly choices, but, but, but we, have the, we have the option to choose. So you have a McDonald's and a Chick-fil-A sitting, sitting at the same exit. I'm going to go for Chick-fil-A every time. That's just me, and my whole family would revolt if I didn't. That's kind of how we operate. But I mean, you know, when you go buy a car, you have a choice. You've got all kinds of choices, just Ford and Chevy. That's always been the big thing, right? It's always been a big thing. I mean, you can go out and buy a Toyota. You can go out and buy a, a Honda. You can go buy a <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, it's our choice. We can go out and, and we, can, we, we have all these choices in the world. And following Jesus is a choice. Following Jesus is a choice that we have to make. It's a choice. You either choose to follow him or you choose to walk away from him. It, it's just the way it is. Now, as we said earlier, there is no in between. I mean, you can choose to follow him or not. It's your choice. That's why that, that, that's the crazy thing. God didn't create us to be robots. 
And it means something more to him when we choose to follow after him, when we choose to praise the Lord, when we choose to serve him with all of our heart. That's really what God wants. And it means so much more. You can choose to live in prosperity, in the prosperity of Jesus, as he said. I come to give life and give it more abundantly. Or you can choose to live in the curse of sin and the, and the consequences of that sin. You can choose that. You can choose. You can choose any of these things. Following Jesus is a choice. We're not going to beat somebody over the head and make them do it, right? I mean, it just, it, that's just the way it is. That's why, you know, in pastor's homes, you, you, I, know, I know plenty of pastor's kids that have walked away from Jesus. Even though they were raised in it. And they... Consequences and the possible fact that I will miss Jesus and spend eternity away from him. See, God allows us to choose whether or not we will commit ourselves completely to him. It's our choice. Paul's, Paul's conversion, you think about it. We think, well, Paul's on the road to Damascus. He's on the road to kill some, to kill all the believers, right? That was his thing. He was on the road to kill all the believers. Jesus met him, knocked him off his horse. Knocked him off his horse. Yeah, how many would say Paul had an experience with Jesus at that moment in time? But you understand. have a choice but he did have a choice god was just very extreme in getting paul's attention and sometimes it takes that extremity to get our attention too sometimes it takes it takes jesus going to the extreme to say hey it's time for you to make a choice Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There was a choice before the Israelites right there. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Will you choose the gods of this world? Or are you going to choose the God of heaven, the God of heaven's armies? Are you going to choose the things that will, do, will, will end in destruction? Or are you going to choose eternal life? What are you going to do? As the protege of Moses. And Moses in Deuteronomy 30 verses 19 and 20, this is what Moses had to say. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Love the Lord your God, obey Him, and remain faithful to Him. For He is your life and He will... Or death, blessing, or curse. And what did the Israelites, for the most part, choose? Death, curse. We see what happened with the Israelites. 
the Israelites ended up in a world of mess. We have that same choice. Every day we wake up, we have that same choice. Life or death, blessing or curse. Choose today what you're going to do. Moses was begging those people. He was begging the Israelites. You need to choose. You need to choose. You need to make the right choice today. Moses saying, you need to make the right choice. I know that here it is. Here it is. It's all laid out to you right now. Life or death, blessing or curse. What are you going to choose? Please choose life. That's essentially what Moses is saying. That's what Joshua is saying. Please choose life. And as we as we experience these things, we need to understand that the choice is ours. We have these choices before us. It's time to move toward God and His blessing. It's time to move toward God into our destiny. Choose today. Who will you serve? We can choose to walk away from God. It's our choice every day. To obey His law, to obey His word, or to disobey His word and do our own thing. It's our choice every day. It's time for us to walk into that blessing. It's time for us to walk into everything that God has for us. You have a destiny. Doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, it doesn't matter how how much money's in your bank account, how much money you don't have. It doesn't matter. What matters is you walking into the destiny that God has set before you. It may be that you're called in the mission field. Well, I'm a little old. Long in the tooth, I guess you could say. Many of them are. But the thing is, they work together, and they want these younger missionaries going out there. They want to get them in the mission field. That's the whole thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know. I don't know what God, God has in store for each and every one of you. I don't know. But I can tell you that God has something for each of you. You have a destiny. Verse 9, Paul says this. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So let's do a heart check right there. Do we really believe Jesus is Lord, first of all? And secondly, do we really believe? to happen the bible makes it very clear that it's not what you do that will get you into heaven it's not what you do good works are great good works as we can see in the world you have people that don't know jesus that, that, that do good works but that's not going to get them into heaven good works will not will not grant us salvation no amount of giving. Uh, 
There is no amount of those things that will get you into a relationship with God. Now, with that, if you know Jesus, you, the, the good works, the good deeds, the kindness should be something that we automatically do. Because that will, God's love, the salvation we have will push us to show grace and mercy to others. And so it's natural outflow of God's people. God's love will push us to do good deeds. But we understand those good deeds will not save us in the end. It will not bring us into a relationship with Jesus. The only thing that can have that, that, that matters is our relationship with Jesus Christ. So you got to do a heart check again. It's time to do a heart check. How well you know Jesus? Has it gotten to be mundane? Do you know Jesus? Well, let's start there. Do you know Jesus? First and foremost, you've got to know Jesus. That's the most important thing. You have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's time to move into that destiny. It's time to move from death into that destiny. Maybe you are, maybe you're here and take for granted what Jesus actually did for you. Maybe you take for granted what Jesus did for you. And how he willingly laid his life down for you. So that you could have eternal life. He paid the ultimate price. So that you could live. Maybe you forget that. Maybe you take that for granted. Maybe you take God's grace for granted. Here's what I want us to do. I want to, it, 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 Facebook, if you're out there and you're listening, I want you to do this. Is a, and you. And, 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 If you need to know Jesus as your Savior in this house, this is it. This is your time. I want everybody repeating this, and I want everybody to mean this from your heart, okay? Say, Jesus, I recognize that you gave yourself for me. I ask that you come into my heart, that you forgive. You died and you rose from the dead for me. You are my Lord in Jesus' name. Now, if you pray that for the first time, great, fantastic, welcome to the family. But now, let's they just every head bowed, every back closed. And so let's keep going. I ask and pray that you restore the passion for the relationship with you to everyone's life. Let us not take for granted what you did for us. Let us not take for granted the heavy price that was paid so that we could live. Father, let us live lives according to you. Let us live lives that are pleasing to you.
Let us live lives with a missional mind. Help us to live this life with that missional mindset that we've got to get the word out to everyone that we come in contact with. Let them experience your love through our actions. Let them experience your grace through our words. Let them experience your mercy through everything that we do. Because you showed grace and mercy to us. We thank you, Lord. And we praise you. Jesus name. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, be praying for those that were not able to attend. Um, I do I do have an offering plate up here. It's on the front row. If you remember, we talked about the last Sunday of every month until we get to September being uh, the a special offering. On July 11th, you can do so if you want to make a, a donation through um, through our online giving or our text to give app. You can do so as well. It's really simple. Uh, you can you can just earmark that for the global outreach offering. Uh, that'll be fantastic. But again, the offering plate is up here on the front row. If you remember it and you and you feel led to do so, please give to that. And because remember, our goal is five thousand dollars this year. That is our goal. So we want to we, we want to be able to give that uh, to the global outreach offering, and we want to be able to bless our missionaries. Amen. Amen. So uh, thank you guys for coming. Let's all stand, and we'll and we'll be dismissed in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for who's here, and we pray for those who aren't here. We just ask and pray that God, you would work and move in our lives. Give us a safe week, and Lord, let us enjoy the holiday next week. And Father, bring us back at the appointed time. And Father, we just give you glory and honor for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Shake hands, be friendly, uh, love each other before you go. We've got to sign up for the mail the 25th of this month. 25th of this month is a meeting.